This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. With me on this Sunday, well, evening, night, is Pete McDonough. Um, nearly 24 hours on since Anthony Joshua lost his titles to Alexander Rusik. What did you make of last night's events at Tottenham Hotspur? Well, I'll tell you what, firstly, I'd like to say congratulations to Eddie Young. Um, it was an amazing, uh, you know, spectacle, um, as well as uh, Sky Sports uh, box office. I mean... It was, it was, it lived up to everything I thought it would do. You know, Tottenham Oxford is an amazing grant, you know. Yeah, Pete, what did you make of uh, the fight itself and uh, Alexander's performance? Um, the fight itself, uh, you know, Alexander Usyk from the, from the offset um, down to the press conferences, down to, um, you know, the public workout, you know, and then the weigh-in. Um, Absolute gentleman, um, as well as Anthony Joshua. For me, it, the magnifying glass was on boxing, and it was a real boxing fight. And it it, it, it was a boxer's, it was a boxer's, um, you know, a spectacle as well. It was brilliant for us all to see it. Um, we, we've had all this YouTube stuff lately and all that sort of stuff, and to have see two fighters of that magnitude. I mean, it weren't brought up that often, but. Uh, I mean, two gold medalists in London in 2012, and then you know, fighting for all the well, all the belts bar one. Um, Saturday night um, was absolutely brilliant. I mean, I've had to put that in there because I feel that that's what this this needs as an introduction um, as well. Um, and Alexander Usyk on the way to the ring. I mean, every single thing he done was pinpoint perfect. I don't know whether you picked up. I don't know whether the commentary picked up. I don't know whether the pundits picked up. But if I was there working the TV, I would have picked up on it straight away. I see Alexander Usyk walk in with a, a mask on his face. And uh, I don't know if he had that because of the old um, uh, Alan Minter against um, Hagler when the pints were getting thrown over him. So even down to walk into the ring, everything was spot on. He didn't want to get taken off the game plan. When he got into the ring... He was absolutely focused. For me, Anthony Joshua, it was like a meet and greet. He was touching people's arms. For me, he didn't even look focused, uh, Umar. He didn't look focused one bit. Um, you know, he kept talking about the crowd all the time. Even on the day before it, he kept talking about the crowd. I want to, I wanna, you know, thank the crowd. And I want to do this and I want to do that. If it was me who was training him, I'd kick him up the arse and say, listen, we've got a big fight on here. You know, we've got to focus. Hmm. Were you surprised by Anthony's tactics that he let Usyk get into a pattern, let him settle down, get him to a rhythm, and, and Anthony didn't really put a dent in Alexander early on? I mean, if you, if you heard my prediction on my channel, Voice from the Corner, I turned around and said, uh, Umar, I said, I know exactly what's going to happen here. Um, Usyk's going to go around to Anthony Joshua's right hand because that's a danger shot that he's going to get hit with. But he knows it's coming. So he's sitting on that back foot. He's leaning on that back foot and he keeps walking on to the right hand. He kept fainting him with a jab. I mean, we never see a faint out of um, Anthony Joshua all night long. There weren't one faint. The only faint that come close to is when the end, when they put the stall in the ring after 12 rounds. I think he was, I think he was mentally, mentally drained. From that fight, I don't think he was. I don't think he was physically drained from that fight. You know, um, from the first round, I mean, they've worked on his feet. I don't know who's working on his feet. Um, for me, it looks like he's been working in the nursery because, I mean, his legs were as wide apart, yeah, as a prostitute in Soho. And I'm being honest, right? At the end of the day, look, look, we can say it is. This is YouTube. If you put me on the TV, I'll say it in a different context, yeah? But, I mean, how are you going to hit Usyk with that right hand when your legs are that wide apart? You know, you're not going to hit him with, you're not going to hit him with the right hand. Listen, we all know he used to fall over his front foot, yeah? But now, he ain't moving his back foot at all. So he couldn't find him with that right hand. I mean, I don't know what the corner were telling him. I mean, Rob McCracken's a very good friend of mine. So Rob McCracken's got the CV. He's got the British, the Commonwealth, the European. He was a world title challenger. He's obviously got the England squad as well. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit sceptical of him going to Tokyo. I know it's his job, but leaving a big fighter for that long with a load of clans. I'm being honest with you. Clans, I call them backslappers. I call them cheerleaders.
you know, because what, what is on their CVs? What is on these people's CVs? I mean, the cutsman, I don't know who the cutsman was in the corner. I mean, it was rubbing the, uh, the bruise out of Anthony Joshua's face in about the 10th round. And uh, Anthony Joshua pushed his hand away from, like, from his eye. I would have hit him over the, over the head with an iron after that. Because if that's your job, yeah, you should... But it's like he just weren't confident with that whole setup. You know, for me, he weren't confident. I mean, Alexander Rusik, I thought we were going to lose the first four or five rounds. I thought Joshua was going to work a little bit harder and then Usyk was going to then start coming into the fight. But he never po posed him no threat. He never even put through a sharp jab out there. Everything he threw was negative. Everything for the first bell was negative, you know, and he threw the right hand a couple of times. It was a little bit of a mirror of Tony Bellew versus um, Alexander Usyk. He'd done the same sort of thing. But I think Tony Bellew's IQ is better than Anthony Joshua's. Um, another thing I want to pick up on here uh, is when you get a rough diamond from the Olympics, which I class Joshua as a rough diamond, he was still a novice. He was still a novice, the man, right? Yeah. When you turn pro, yeah, you, you shine that diamond up, um, Omar, you start trying that diamond up here. Yeah? So you learn him how to hold. The man don't even know how to hold. So when people turn around before this fight and saying, I think it's his size. I think he don't use his size. He don't use his size. He's not experienced enough to use his size. Mm. If you learn him how to hold behind the elbows. See you sick when he's holding behind the elbows. Held him behind the elbows, pushed him off and went to work again. I mean, even Joshua, when he pulled his head down it with the uppercut, Usyk, well, that, no, none of that. And he was clever to the referee, Michael Alexander. He never even get Mike, Michael Alexander getting the fight, Usyk, because he kept arguing about things. I mean, for me, when you turn that uh, rough diamond pro, yeah, you learn him how to hold, hold around the back of the elbows. You learn him the little nuts inside. You learn him the little elbows. I know we shouldn't be talking about this on here, but you learn him the, the tricks of the pro trade, mm. uh, which I thought Robert McCracken would have learned him, them mm. sort of tricks. I don't know whether... He's a one-trick pony and he can't learn these tricks. He don't learn these tricks. But for the rest of the corner that's there, I don't know any of them. I don't know their CVs. And this is a video I put out earlier myself. I turned around and said, this is the only sport in the world, Umar. Yeah? Not sport, job in the world, right? You don't need a CV, mate. You can be a cleaner. No disrespect to a cleaner. Or you can be a lawyer. You can become a boxing trainer within two weeks. Listen. I had more trainers than JD Sports, right? I boxed all around the world. I boxed all around the world, yeah, right? I've got all the experiences. I've been in camps with Mayweather. I've been in camps with Canelo. I've been all around the place, so I understand it. 35 years experience. But when people like me speak, it's like they try and shut you down because they've got no experience, you know? Uh, listen, it's like presenters. I know I'm, I'm going on a tangent here, but I hope you don't mind. But it's like presenters, yeah? A presenter... Umar, you're a presenter, man. Yeah, you like your boxing and you will have your little bit of, of it about it, but you're a presenter. First hand, you're a presenter, right? So why have they not got pundits with the presenter? And not one pundit, there should be two or three like there is in football. I am the Roy Keane of boxing. I am the Roy Keane of boxing. I'll say it as it is, right? But I don't think we should be lying or hiding behind anything. But what I will say about Anthony Joshua is this. Anthony Joshua has been a credit to the sport of boxing whether he fights again or he don't fight again. I don't like all this backlash. Oh, he's rubbish. Oh, he's this. Oh, he's that. Hold up a minute. Three months ago, when I called you sick to win this fight, everyone thought I was mad, right? But at the end of the day, Usyk, listen, Usyk's a great little fighter. Anthony Joshua's a good big fighter. Mm -hmm. A great little fight will always beat a good big fighter, yeah? Does he beat Tyson Fury? No, I don't think he does. Because Tyson lays all over him. Lays all over him just like he does against Deontay Wilder. Lays all over him, takes all the pay, power away from him. But I understand that. I understand that. Boxing people will understand that for some boxing people, but some boxing people don't, you know? Peter, just a, just the last one from me. Um, going into this rematch, which looks like it will happen yeah. between Usyk and Joshua, do you see a different outcome at all? Do you give him any chance? If he don't get rid of them cheerleaders and backslappers, yeah? I'm being honest with you now. I know Rob well. And if Rob don't take full control of this camp, Anthony Joshua needs a total change within his camp. The only person that I think he needs in that camp, if, if Rob's not going to 
you know, get rid of these people is Eddie Hearn. Because for me, to see the passion of Eddie Hearn last night when a fan said something to him and he turned around and I could see it. And, and, and that's genuine. People were turning around and going, oh, you know what, though? He's lost his diamond. He's done his... Hold up, mate. He's took them, he's took them around from your call to Tottenham Oxford to Wembley Stadium. Listen, no one sells tickets like Anthony Joshua. You know, I will be selling tickets like Anthony Joshua when I get there. But, uh, no, but it's true. It's true. No one sells tickets like Anthony Joshua. So for me, as, as much as it was a great win by Usyk, congratulations to Usyk and Anthony Joshua. Um, commiserations and he can come again if he changes things but I will say this before I go as well for me for all of us people here in the UK it's a sad that was a sad night for boxing in Britain because he brought it back to the forefront and Joshua in my opinion okay Peter appreciate your thoughts uh, on last night uh, hope you're well and uh, I'm sure we'll get a, a word from you and I feel soon eh yeah, I'll be on here all the time now, mate. I'm back. Good to hear, Peter. Nice one, Uma. Uh, enjoy Thank you very the much, weekend. Uma. And remember, that's the top and bottom of it, Uma. That's the top and bottom of it. That's nice the one. top and bottom of it. Cheers, Come mate. On, Peter. Take Cheers, care. Mate. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye.